Hello everyone, Mila here and welcome back to Let's Play Near Replicant. And unfortunately, this particular episode will not be blind. I have actually tried to record this episode twice already in the past. The first time I was about 45 minutes in and the power cut out. And when the power cuts out, when I'm still in the middle of recording, that corrupts the entire recording. So I couldn't use it at all. And the second time, I was about a half hour in, I got a knock at my door, and when I answered it, I was physically assaulted. I have no idea why that happened. I now have a hole in my eardrum as a result, so I could potentially lose my hearing in my left ear. I, no, no idea why that happened, it just randomly got attacked. But they, they specifically knocked on my door, so they came after me for some reason. I wish I knew why. This is just a... Really bad episode for me, though, but I'm going to try to actually finish it this time. Damn! Where'd they go? I spent... Get him! Don't let him escape! I spent several hours in the hospital just to be safe. Got some antibiotics now, so my ears get infected. Are we gonna die, Mom? My child. You've almost grown up now, my child. Stay strong. You must run now, do you understand? What about you? I'll challenge him and give you time to escape. No, he can't! Be safe, my child. Be safe and happy. Promise me that you'll remember your mother. Mom? Mom, wait! Let's go together! Mom! Shade and his mom. They're in here! Mom! No! Don't leave me! Mom! Why? Who's there? Khalil, what's your name? Military defense robot, P-33. You are an intruder. You must be eliminated. Error. There is something leaking from your eyes. I'm crying, you big dumb robot! I miss my mom! So shades can cry? What, would water come out of their eyes when they cry? I mean, it doesn't look like their bodies contain water. What is crying? Who is mom? Doesn't matter. I can't see her ever again because she's dead. Uh, in reality, I don't think my mom has much time left herself either. I'm not gonna like it when she goes. My creator is also dead. He perished hundreds of years ago. Hundreds of years ago? Really? 874 years, 10 months, 14 days, 4 hours, and 43 minutes. 44 minutes. Leave it to a robot to be that specific. Aren't you lonely? I am incapable of being lonely, or missing others, or crying. I'm crying because I don't want to die. You will die. If the humans catch me, they're going to kill me. Why will they kill you? If they're a kid, they'd be crying to be, a to be scared of death. I mean, being scared of death is something that people generally are anyway. 
But for a kid, it's even worse. I will not permit the humans to kill Khalil. Huh? Military defense robot P-33 will protect you. You're gonna help me? P-33 is charged with defending others. P-33 will defend Khalil. Oh, hooray! Thanks, robot! Since it's your friends now, I'm gonna call you Beepy. -Bee. Definitely a kid. Man, there's gotta be tons of machinery here. Yeah, but I don't know how much we can actually use. Oh, wow! Check this out! It looks brand new! Hey, be careful, all right? This place is dangerous. Uh, I'll be fine. So you do that. Oh no! Huh? Look out! Huh? We've done this once before, don't you remember? This is the second time we've done this scenario. Huh? Jacob? Oh god, this can't be happening! Jacob! Jacob! I'm glad they pull away when he rips his arm off. <gasps> Not the most pleasant thing to see. Uh, no! Sees the bot standing there, and thinks it's to blame, not knowing that he himself is to blame for his own brother's death. Wow, that was scary. The noise of the intruders caused the structure to fail. They should have proceeded with more caution. One intruder has perished. Oh, that's terrible. I don't think they were chasing me. They seem nice. Yeah, they weren't after you. There would have been no conflict. The junk heap. Perhaps we should speak to the brothers. They might know something about this. Yep. Oh, hey there. It's been a while. You're the little one, aren't you? You've grown up. No, it hasn't been a while. This is the fourth time I've done this now. First in Route A, and this is the third time here attempting to record this. Alphaz, your brother. My brother's been dead for four years. Oh, I see. Please forgive the question. It's okay. I need to ask you something. What is it? You heard any rumors about shades around here? Not the little ones. I'm looking for one that's unusually big and powerful. No, I haven't heard about anything like that. But I haven't really been listening. All I want is to destroy robots. Just rip them up. Uh, okay. Never mind then. See you later. Wait! Yes. I recently got my hands on a weapon. A very powerful weapon. I thought you might get some use out of it. Don't we already have this weapon? Yeah, there's an emote I meant to use. The, uh, the first time I forgot. The second time the controls weren't working. So this time I'm going to use it. <laughs> Shh. These things happen the second time around. Fourth wall breaking! Gotta love it! <laughs> I was not expecting this the first time I got here. <laughs> mm, this sword has seen better days. Yeah, it's pretty beat up. I mean, there's potential, but it's fairly powerless right now. 
Can you repair it? I can repair anything with the proper materials. If you'll fix it, I'll get the parts. <laughs> I'm so glad I decided not to throw this out. I'm gonna need some memory alloy. Only the real big enemies on the second basement level have them, so watch yourself. Also, here's the passcode to get down there. Use it on the elevator. You got it. I'm gonna need only the real- You got it. But what can I help you with? You can strengthen my weapon. Come. Yeah, I'm not the most excited about playing this right now. Considering I'm sick of this section, I want to move on. It's a shame about the older lad. He was but a child. Sounds like you went into a dangerous area for the sake of the business. That's how it goes. Again. The elder brother postponed his joy for the sake of his sibling. Do you think he was ever truly happy? Just making his little brother happy would have been enough. That's what being an older brother is like. I was gonna try recording. I was gonna record a bunch of videos yesterday. Well, I was gonna hopefully record the night I was initially, uh, well, the second time I was recording this. But then I got attacked, and I was in such pain after that. And the next day, that I just held off and didn't do anything for a while. A lot better now. Although my left ear feels really weird, as you'd expect. My hearing's a bit weird, but ah, uh, but if it heals properly, then it should be back to normal. If it doesn't heal properly or it gets infected or something, we have antibiotics to prevent that from happening. Then I might go deaf in my left ear. Or have worse problems. So, let's just hope that doesn't happen. No, no, no. Hey, double jumping. Bounce out of that. Until that happens. So my headset likes to slide off of my head, so I had to put it back on and letting go of the controller for a moment, maybe fall. I wonder if the Damascus steel is good for anything other than just darn that dash forward. I wonder if it's good for anything other than selling. I don't know. I haven't bothered to look anything up either. I should probably do that. Look up what material is good for selling and what could I actually use if I'm ever going to bother to upgrade my weapons enough to need it. It's not like I go out of my way to find crafting materials. I don't play this game outside of recording. Or when I'm about when I'm about to record. Which is typically how I do let's plays.
like just get myself to a point where it's best to start recording like I did this time. Particularly SMT3 and Pokemon Legends Arceus are the ones that I really play out. I've done a lot of stuff outside of my, what you see on the videos. want to get back to Arceus, but I'm trying to finish up these uh, current Let's Plays first. There's a memory alloy. Now blow up. Titanium alloy. I literally did not change the stats of these enemies at all. This is the one I've always hated. Because you gotta wait for that slow door to open. And then it just blows up in my face. Although when I tried doing that in my second attempt to record this, I got it on my first try. After many, many fails during the first recording. <laughs> I did worse this time than I did the second time. Like a heck. Or technically, this is the fourth time since I had to do this in a day. But Route C should be a completely different story. If it goes like Automata does, and I hope it does. Let me out! As I was in the middle of uh, brand new stuff that wasn't part of Route A, Okay, ready? What's a ship? When the uh, recording got corrupted the first time, unfortunately, it was another wall of text. A large seagoing vessel that carries freight and passengers over bodies of water. The power went out during that wall of text, so I never got past that. <laughs> Yay! You're so great, BB! You've learned so much! You have taught me much, Kalia. You have helped to expand my vocabulary. You have instructed me in the ways of the outside world. Well, there's tons of stuff I don't know either. Maybe we should leave here and go explore the world. Because we are friends. That's right! Yay! It's gonna be fun! Yeah, when, the, when I initially did them as a boss, I thought the, the shade had basically taken control of the robot, but you can see clearly here, that was not the case. They ended up being friends. Heal me. That's some pretty impressive stuff you found. That's exactly what you asked me to find. I'll start upgrading your weapon right away. And since you did me a favor, I won't even charge you for it. 
Well, actually, this is gonna take a little more time than I thought. No sense in you waiting around. I'll send you a letter once it's ready. That would be great. This appears we have some free time on our hands. At least that expensive time. I can't afford that. I got no money. Maybe Popolis found some information about the Shadow Lord. Let's drop by the village. Very well. I got no money in game, and I'm going to have significantly less money in real life because the hospital visit is going to drain my funds very, very quickly. I live in the United States, and everyone knows how bad medical is over here. People will regularly go bankrupt due to medical bills. I've got enough saved where that shouldn't happen. But just staying here in this motel room is draining my funds. Slowly, but it's doing so. So I'm worried about running out of money even faster now. I'm gonna hope that apartment that's gonna be available at the end of April, I can apply for it and get approved for it. And then I'll, I'll drain less of my money in a hurry. It'll be a lot cheaper than staying here. Try to turn it to barrel it through here, but the sharp turn you can't really turn well while it's rushing forward like that, which makes sense. That's physics. Gotta give them that. The boars do not break the laws of physics in terms of that. Yes, I see that you have a quest, and I will be ignoring it. I didn't lag, what? I still want to go down to that basement. I don't think I've ever been there. Learned anything new about the Shadow Lord's key, Popola? Uh, yes, actually. She knows all about it. She's just telling you little by little. <laughs> you know, I was just going to talk to you about that. You remember the Airy, right? That depressing shell of a village? Well, the Airy is where Nidhogg is staying. Different Airy, but it's still the Airy. Not so much anymore, it sounds like. I just got this letter from the village chief. Have a look. I've seen this letter many times now. Sacrifice? Isn't that the name of one of the key fragments? The letter is identical to Rude. I don't see why it wouldn't be. That's right. I've been trading notes with leaders from every town in the land. You're amazing, Popola. Hmm. This entire affair strikes me as a bit too convenient. I'm afraid Grimoire Vice is correct. What do you mean? <sighs> the area has been shut off from the world for years. And now they've not only opened trade routes, but they freely exchange information about the Shadow Lord. I agree. It seems rather unnatural. And dangerous. You're overthinking it. Besides, I don't care if it's dangerous. I won't get Yona back by just sitting around and waiting. Yeah, doing nothing isn't the best idea when you're trying to save someone. There might be some scenarios where doing nothing is the best thing to do, though. There is one game in particular I can think of where doing nothing was actually the way to win. There are shades there. I'll just kill them and be done with it. Oh dear. Well, if that's the way you feel, I guess I won't stop you. Try speaking with the chief when you get there. I'm still really gonna get back to playing Bravely Default 2. 
I stopped it. I was playing it, then I stopped playing months ago. The area, huh? All right, let's go see the chief. It was a soul-crushing place. I simply haven't been back to it. Not that I don't like the game, it's just it's the freaking difficulty. The difficulty is really high unless you use cheap tactics. There is one job I can use that's really cheap. That makes fights really, really easy. I don't want to do it. I cannot fathom that village setting up a mercantile. They must have truly opened their minds. Yeah, I have my doubts. Aren't you glad to be going back home, Kaine? Home? The place is a shithole. Ooh, the village. It's home to so many terrible little memories, isn't it, Kaine? <laughs> Shut up, shut up, shut up! Freaking shade, I was waiting for the dialogue! Dare you attack my boar! I'm gonna waste time getting back on and going through here because that's what I was gonna do in the first place. Just hop off it immediately anyway. I'm still gonna do what I was planning to do. Screw you, shades. We do not desire. We do not desire needless conflict. If we can continue to live with humans, then we can continue to live peacefully. But that young man will come. Yes, the young man will come. He will kill us all, women and children included. What should we do? What can we do? Well, it's really easy what you should do. If you know he's gonna come in and kill you because you're shades, then simply don't reveal that you're shades. Keep that hidden the whole time. It's literally that simple. That's all you've gotta do. But now, as we already know from Route A, they go crazy because he says he's gonna kill the shades. So they immediately get hostile. That wouldn't necessarily need to happen if you would just keep it hidden. Kill all of them? Raw, I'm going to attack you now. How about you just don't do that? By far, the easiest way to not get killed because you're a shade is to not let him know that you're a shade. Uh, hello? We're here from Popla's village. It's all over. We came to ask about the letter you sent. Our days are numbered. Our village is doomed. Our village is doomed. I know this because it's already happened once before in the past and it's about to happen again. Time is repeating itself. As cheerful as ever, it seems. You're the one who wrote the letter, right? I... I don't know about any letter. What the hell is going on here? It may be faster for us to take our inquiries elsewhere. Let us ask around. Someone must know something. My thought on this is that it's Popola herself who uh, made the letter and arranged all this to happen. Because as we already know, she works for the Shadow Lord. Make sure you stop. Yes, make sure I stock up on necessities. I should really use these. <laughs> I'll sell some stuff first. And I wish I knew what to actually sell. Is that something I should sell for money or what? 
I mean, these, they just drop randomly from enemies anyway, so I can get rid of those. And a bunch of these. We only have four of those. There's these. Yeah, I've actually sold this stuff. Well, this is my third time now, so. Come back any time. At the end, I'm just repeating what I did when I first tried to record this. It's by you. Thanks. I think I heard something about that. So, you know about the letter? Hmm. Maybe I don't. I'm not sure. Ah, which is it, man? Oh, uh, and if I may ask, are you friends of Kaine? You could say that. Ah, I've heard the rumors. Here to hunt shades, are you? Indeed. Our aim is to defeat every last one. Every... Every last one? Here's where you go. Well, I hope your hunt's successful. So I'll see you again some other time. Let I me mean, just leave it at that. Everyone. 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 Instead of going crazy and attacking like this. Spice. Beware. This man is a shade. Damn it. It's a trap. They figured as much. You really are trying to live in peace. You don't keep your try to, You don't do this. But if you are actually trying to kill him, then that's different, of course. A thousand apologies. We were distracted by the local welcoming party. Want some help? A carnival of murder. I love it. Yeah. But not all of them. Some are still human, so be careful. I have no idea what causes the sudden lag. It disappears pretty quickly. I just know I don't like it when it does that. Going shade! <laughs> I'd stop, but I need the EXP and any items you may drop. Plus, the game says that I have to kill you or I can't go on. There was no reason for me to stop. Lady, she's a shade. No, no, you people are the monsters here. Stay back, kid. Your sister is one of them now. I don't care what she is, she's my sister. He just stands there and takes a blow like an idiot. Stop it! Don't hurt my sister! Where'd he kill her? I should both the edge.
What madness. These people are behaving as if we are the villains. Well, to them you are. Everyone's a hero in their own story, after all. Kill them! Kill them now! No! You've got to stop this! We're trying to save you from the shades! Please! You have to stop! Emil! We need to get out of here! Kaine! Kaine, get up! Hurry! Oh, the little vixen has finally run out of steam! Hey. Is it my turn now? Are you sure about that sunshine? You don't do that, Tyran. A human's a human. Stop this at once. Leave us in peace! Makes it as a the fox and she is a human. Over there. It's all over. This village is pissed. What could those black swirls be? What they are! What else would they be? says I can't not do this A shade as well. That thing sucked up the villagers. No! If we keep this up, we're gonna kill them all! We can't let that happen! Our village, our world, where am I? Who am I? It's weird, the shade is dividing into one giant thing. How does that work? something from within the creature. Probably that small one. Uh, look down so I can shoot you in the eye. Oh, you are as a giant the eye. Power of all of shades? It will take more than a barrage of magic to stop us. The first to waver is the first to die. Look how plenty heal your items. Why did they not do damage? Really wide open, yeah, it did nothing. The surrounding tentacles appear to deflect magic. Yeah, if the tentacles weren't blocking it, it, it would affect it deflected magic anyway. Now, focus your magic on the beast center. I can't be attacked! I gotta think I'm so powerful compared to the enemies now. It was at this point when there was knocking at my door when I was recording this last time. Look out! Something's coming! 
Well, not, not quite this point. Or maybe it was. So point is located around the back. Try attacking it from above. I'll try to pin it down. Emil. Yeah, I think that was it. Emil. Uh, oh, I'll keep it busy. Yeah, the you, the cutscene stopped. From behind. Go around and get it. And then I was Please, badly hurry. injured. Emil can handle this. We must circle behind the creature at once. So I just turned my PC off at that point, basically. You must strike it in the eye. There's quite a lot of blood. And I didn't want to bleed all over my keyboard, mouse, and all that. My controller. I, I was I was literally about to press up to heal. I didn't notice my health. I was literally pressing up to heal. Point is located around the back. Try attacking it from above. I'll try to pin it down. Emil! Emil! Uh, oh, I'll, I'll keep it busy. You should be able to attack from behind. Go around and get it. Please, hurry! Emil can handle this. We must circle behind the creature at once. I was a bit distracted thinking about that incident. You must strike it in the eye. A lag happens for some unknown reason. Escaping to the inner level. I'm coming. Gotta catch my breath. <laughs> Careful, Emil. Won't help anyone if we lose you here. This fight really does remind me of the uh, the final boss of Arctic Lad Three. It's a giant eyeball. the hell out of that thing! How can it still move? Its combined powers are beyond even my greatest suspicion. to attack it. Things have taken hold. The ultimate weapon is being deployed. Call the warrior of light that can handle the ultimate weapon. Ah, oh, fuck. This ain't good. 
good, sunshine. And it was in the middle of this, which is when the recording got corrupted because the power went out. It only went out for like a second, but that was all it took. So I'm going to stop the recording right here and just immediately restart it to continue with this. I'm not going to stop the episode until this is done. But I'm going to stop the recording right now just to save it in case something bad happens again. All right, now I've got this so I can continue. Uncontrollable magic. So I'm making sure it decides to work. I have to protect the people I love. That was my only thought. I was going to unleash a magic powerful enough to destroy not only the shade, but everyone else as well. All of them. So many innocent lives. Destroy. Eviscerate. Crush. Kill. These are the dark impulses that overwrite all other thoughts. As a being that was created to be a magical weapon, these are my instincts. Or maybe it's better to call them our instincts. Emile's Dream Rampage. A klaxon sounds from deep within the bowels of the laboratory. Thick metal shutters drop down, sealing off the room with a series of dull metal thuds. Report the experiment! Number six is out of control! Get, everyone get out of here! Now! Get out of here! The researcher's words are abruptly cut off as a massive hand materializes out of the gloom and lifts him high into the air. The researcher begins to scream. He screams and screams, the sound echoing off the walls of the laboratory until the hand squeezes down, coating the room in a deep crimson hue. The rest of his colleagues stand in silence, mouths open, unable to process what they have just seen. Then a female scientist takes a step back and lets fly with a heartbreaking wail. This is a terrible mistake. But the sound of her cry suddenly brings forth a monster in all of its terrible glory. Its body is a bloated corpse, its head a grinning skull. It is massive, many times the size of a human. The head lolls from side to side as it trumps around the room on all fours, bringing to mind the wild maneuverings of some wretched, starving beast. This creature, this thing, is experimental weapon number six also known as Alua. Oh, oh no, oh no, please stop! Oh God, save me, save me! I don't want to die! No one really does. One by one, the maddened cries of the researchers are silenced. Number six understands her petitions and pays them no heed, instead continuing its rampage of destruction and slaughter with a focus that borders on obsession. After an eternity, the screaming stops. The alarms fall silent, and only then does the creature make a sound, howling out with an unfathomable roar that echoes up and down the empty halls of the blood-soaked laboratory. It's a sound that curses those who had dared to bring such evil into the world, and yet one also seems to be pleading for help. Lots of dots. Two sets of footsteps echo in an otherwise silent corridor on the first level of the laboratory. One set belongs to a young boy, his eyes blindfolded and his hands restrained. It can only be a meal. The other belongs to a severe man in a long white coat. The man drags the way along by means of a long chain attached to a set of shackles on his wrists. Rubble is scattered here and there across the floor of the corridor. Victor Yuri, an exceedingly difficult one for a boy who cannot see. Um, excuse me, could you please walk a bit slower, sir? 
I'm not used to being blindfolded, and... Rather than stopping, the man only increases his pace, causing the boy to stumble in an attempt to keep up. This last humiliation proves too much, and the boy finds himself unable to arrest his fall. His fall escapes! You gotta call the police to arrest it properly! With the ability, without the ability to brace himself, he topples to the floor, smashing his head in a pile of debris and causing a trickle of warm blood to worm its way down his pale, frightened face. Yeah, kind of what happened to me. Agonized by the pain, the boy inadvertently opens his eyes, causing the falling drops of blood to emit a strange crackling sound before transforming into tiny white rocks. Close your damn eyes! roars the man. Y yes, sir, stammers the boy as he slams his lids shut. Uh, he petrified his own blood. He hadn't yet realized he hadn't realized the blindfold had slipped off during the fall, but now he keeps his eyes squeezed shut so tightly that sparkles appear against the black of his vision. The boy is a meal, that was obvious. Also known as number seven. He is a magical weapon whose eyes are capable of turning to stone anything that falls out of their gaze. <sighs> if you looked in a mirror. Would he turn himself to stone, or would he turn the mirror to stone? Don't look at me! Barks the man. Never look at me! I'm sorry, sir. I'm looking at the ground now, so if you just hand me the blood... Instead of waiting for him to finish, the man extends one foot and presses Emil's face to the floor with a heavy black boot. S sir, stop! You're hurting me! I told you to keep your eyes and your mouth shut, so do it! The man knows this boy. This weapon can wipe him out with a single glance, and yet subduing him in this way gives him a sense of relief. After making certain the boy is sufficiently cowed, the man leads down and retrieves the blindfold and knots it tightly around the boy's quivering head. Right then, on your feet, let's move. Emil staggers to his feet, trying to ignore the red liquid oozing down his face. The blood doesn't matter. The pain doesn't matter. All that matters is finishing the job he has set out for him to do. The second level of the laboratory is even worse shape than the first. The environs are littered with rubble and rock, making the thought of a decent foothold laughable. When the man's eyes linger on a section of rubble stained a deep red, he had a sudden image of warm, gooey brownies slathered in strawberry sauce. <laughs> his stomach lurches at the thought, but when he attempts to avert his eyes, they land on the remains of a human being rather into what can only be described as paste. Ew. The man blinks. His mind goes strangely blank before attempting to determine exactly how many humans had to be sacrificed to create the scattered piles of flesh around him. After a moment, his thoughts simply cease altogether, as if his mind realizes that trying to put a thing into form is folly. Y you can go the rest of the way on your own, says the man in a voice much weaker than he wishes it to be. I mean, what does it matter? You're not even human. You're a monster! With this, the man spins around and dashes back into the hall. Yeah. This is new to me now, so I'm past the point where I've recorded before. The helpless Emil simply listens as the footsteps of his erstwhile captor fade into the distance. Fade into the distance. Emil finds himself alone in a room with a stench of death and blood. For a moment, he considers opening his eyes, but the thought of the horrors that await him quickly quashes plan. Emil finds himself that, yeah. Instead, he stands still and listens intently. Eventually, a far-off sound reaches his ears. I forget when I look away for a moment. I get to straighten where I was. That's the howl I heard before. Emil resumes walking, using the sound of the distant voice to guide him. Almost as if it was calling him home. By the time Emil reaches the third, by the time Emil reaches the third level, he is moving on memory as much as sound. His hands and face are covered in fresh wounds from numerous falls. But every time he thinks about giving up, his mind returns to his sister. We studied together. We ate cookies together. We cried together. We laughed together. And sometimes I was the only one who got yelled at. That's why I was never lonely. Our being together allowed me to stay strong. Yeah, that's how it works. What you can't do alone, you can do with someone else. For Emil, his sister was all he had to live for. So holding that feeling close to his chest, he presses on, one slow step after the other. Finally, Emil finds himself drawing close to a certain experimental chamber in the deepest part of the laboratory. The howl is very close now, and as he touches a switch that controls the door, he thinks about his mission. Number six is the ultimate weapon. She is his sister. 
Now he must turn her to stone. The door slowly opens, revealing the massive interior of the experimentation chamber. After a few steps, Emil removes his blindfold and slowly opens his eyes. His sister looks before him, but she looks nothing like the girl he once knew. Instead, he sees a savage beast crawling all fours to the shredded remains of researchers. As the thing he had, as the thing that had been his sister stops and tilts its head in Emil's direction, he focuses his gaze on it. A series of soft crunching sounds emerge from the creature as his magic does its terrible work. First the fingers, then the hands, arms, legs, head. What little color the beast once possessed fades to a dull ashen gray. And yet, somehow, if someone's with strength that if someone's with strength remains, it pulls itself to a, toward a meal, one slow, lumbering effort at a time. Wailing, the massive monstrosity closes in. Is she worried about me? Or is she coming to kill me? A meal feels, feels prepared to accept either outcome. After all, this was his older sister, the person he loved more than anyone else in the world. Halula, I... The moment Emil speaks, number six comes to a sudden halt. Silence descends on the chamber as the siblings stare at each other. I'm sorry, Halula. Well, Halula? But everyone says you're too powerful. They say it's too dangerous unless I seal you away. I'm so sorry. As Emil watches, her body begin to turn to stone once more. Number six simply waits in utter, perfect silence. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry! Yeah, it was only like having to kill your own sister. That, that's gotta hurt. I don't have a sister. I've got a brother, but I haven't seen him in so long. I wouldn't want to kill him. The moment number six's petrification is complete, her memories flood into Emil's mind. The two of them hiding, huddling together in the cold. All alone in the world, no one to protect them. All she wanted was to save her little brother. And yet, it was that little brother who, in a sense, saved her. The moment the petrification is complete, Emil sinks to his knees. A frozen sister and a little brother racked with sin. Alone in this cold cage, the two of them weep in a single silent voice. Lots more dots. It was our combined power that destroyed the airy. Whole existences, entire lives, even their memories. We took it all. We took everything. My sweet, gentle sister turned into a monster. And the same thing will happen to me now that I have her power. If my instinct is a, if my instinct is a weapon went out and destroyed me in the process, if that power ends up hurting someone I love, I... Yeah... Neil's terrified of what might happen to him, what he might become. What have I done? Like he just did it now. I killed innocent people. I killed them all. <laughs> But you saved us. If it wasn't for you, we'd all be dead. We owe you. But... But I... It's all right. Really? Don't look back. All you can do is keep moving forward. We had best be off. Yeah. All right, now I will definitely stop right here. This is as far as I'm going in this particular recording. I will see you in the next one.